Welcome, Bayard Winthrop, uh, founder and CEO of American Giant. Bayard, great to have you. You and I were just talking last week, and I was like, really got to get this conversation on CNBC. Um, I, I remember seeing you make this pivot, but you say demand has come back so strong that, uh, you know, inventory just isn't there at the level that, that one might expect. It's something that we're hearing across the economy, but for a, a primarily digital online player like you, you've been able to be nimble. Yeah, we have, although, you know, some of that was self-inflicted, John. It's hard to forget to, to remember this far back now, but, you know, we moved aggressively early in the pandemic to cut our supply chain back to sort of um, uh, get ready for what we thought was going to be a bad year. And then as, as volume picked up, uh, we've been in kind of a scrambling and chasing posture ever since. It's been easier doing that domestically, uh, but it's been a challenge. So you make comfortable clothes which kind of works well for people who are, are stuck at home or at least close to home. And you had a model where you are primarily online with a few retail locations. How is that going to shift coming out of the pandemic? What are you going to do with bricks and mortar? Yeah, so I can tell you what our perspective about it is. We, we are a, a believer that we are going to snap back quickly. Uh, we think that the second half of the year is going to be very strong. Uh, we are getting aggressive in retail. We're trying to open up uh, retail locations when we find leases and locations that we like. Uh, but the underlying bet there is that uh, consumer demand is going to continue to remain strong and is going to actually accelerate through the second half of the year. So we're getting on our toes with retail. What has happened to that domestic supply chain, though, in this past year? I mean, you're unique. You, you make clothes under the American Giant uh, label. They're made here from um, material sourced, you know, cotton sourced in the U.S., um, what has happened to some of the mills from some of the uh, different uh, suppliers who you've worked with over this period of time? Yeah, as, as you say, John, it, it, we do have a, we have a very diversified supply chain, all of which is domestic, from the cotton in the ground all the way through to the finished product. Uh, but it's been a mixed bag. You find that um, some of the uh, the smaller uh, family uh, operations have had a hard time uh, with weaker balance sheets. They've had a hard time navigating um, the uncertain environment that we've been in. Um, but on the larger end of the spectrum, some of the the larger organizations that have invested in technology and stayed in front of the technological and automation curve curve have done quite well. Um, so we've had a couple of our suppliers fall out that has caused us to scramble in our, our, uh, our Woven's Bottoms business, for example. We had a key factory that went out of business. Um, so it's been a mixed bag, but the, but the people that have stayed in front of it and stayed aggressive about investing in their capacity have weathered quite well and I think are poised to accelerate through the second half of the year. So let's take a step back and talk a little policy. You, you, you have so much, you know, all of your supply chain domestic, so you've got a great view on this. What's needed to really support and even grow the efforts uh, of those various sorts of businesses that are in your supply chain looking to have jobs here, looking to grow opportunity here in the U.S.? It's a great question, John. I think it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a varied answer. But at the core of it is, I think, we need more predictability on the supply chain side of things so that the supply chain uh, uh, components can invest, can invest in technology and can invest in scale. And so I think that the policymakers have a role to play there uh, as the Biden administration begins to think a little bit more uh, thoroughly about um, uh, uh, beefing up supplies from the United States. Retailers, you see Walmart's announcement that came out a couple of weeks ago about their big buy in uh, Made in America initiative. I think as retailers begin to take a leadership position there and, and require their suppliers make things in the United States, that helps. I think consumers have a role to play as they begin to get a little bit more cautious and aware about where their things are being made that they're buying. And finally, I think brands need to lead uh, so that uh, when you have people getting caught up in either what's happening in the Suez Canal right now or the Xinjiang situation in China, I think brands need to recognize that the, the global supply chain is more fragile, a little bit more fraught than they realized and begin to, to take the lead domestically as well. So if those things come together, I think that will provide um, uh, a setting where uh, the manufacturing sector can continue to, to thrive and grow in the coming years. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.